first practice in the books, and I'm loving what I'm seeing out of this wide receiver room. In the world full of podcasts, he's the undisputed heavyweight champion of hot takes, an Auburn sports homer, master of the book, and message board legend. Get your buttons buttoned and your hats flattened because the Top Button Podcast is about to kick off. And you don't want to miss your courtside seat. Now, here's your host, Charlie Five. Yes, sir. We're back. It's another episode of the Top Button Podcast. I'm your host, Charlie Five, and we are ready to get after it, break down this first day of practice, first day of fall camp. Uh, and and have some fun at the same time. Happy Friday, recording live again from Orange Beach, Alabama, headed back to Lee County uh, in just a little bit. Uh, but we got to talk about practice. We got to break it down. Uh, and before we do that, you know, we give got to give a shout out to our boy Ford Stokes with Active Wealth Management. Look, he's ready to serve the Auburn family, ready to serve, help Auburn alumni uh, with a free portfolio analysis. Just why not? Just make sure. Why not make sure that what you're doing is going to get you to uh, where you want to be? Uh, so check him out at uh, retirementresults.com forward slash plan and let Ford help you uh, at least check over everything and just make sure, again, make sure you're headed in the right direction. So uh, give him a shout. Tell him more Eagle. Tell him I sent you. Uh, and uh, make a friend at the same time. So great guy, Ford Stokes, ready to help the Auburn family. Uh, all right, guys, the first practice is uh, in the books. Uh, I, I said yesterday I was fully prepared to overreact, and uh, this could be the first version of that. This could, <laughs> this could be episode one of, of prepared overreaction. No, uh, it, it was great to kind of just get back into it, uh, see, uh, see some videos, see some clips, uh, see uh, you know guys running routes, guys uh, hitting sleds. Uh, all kind of stuff because football is just right around the corner. Even had some football last night. Got, I mean, you have your first day of practice and you get the Hall of Fame game last night. I mean, it's football season. There's no week from now until like February where you're not going to have some form uh, of football. But the Auburn Tigers kicked their camp off. And there's a million directions you could go. But I think the big story is, uh, the big story at least early, is the wide receiver room uh, in general. And I think it starts, the story has to start with Keandre Lambert Smith. I think they call him Dre, uh, wearing number five and looks much bigger. Uh, I think he looks much faster and he still looks as smooth uh, as he did uh, at Penn State. Now, one thing that I think it seems to be like a common theme between all the different reports, uh, you heard Zach talk about it, I think Justin Hokinson mentioned it, uh, it's something that I think is very, very telling as far as the urgency and, and also as far as, uh, I guess, what the coaches see in, in this kid as far as the impact that he can make right now. Uh, I've, I've Followed a lot of Auburn practices, uh, and I've never seen something quite like this. But basically, there's a coach on Ke- on Keandre Lam- on Dre. I'm just going to call him Dre because it's easier to say, <laughs> easier to say every single time. So if I say Dre, I'm talking about Keandre Lambert Smith. Uh, there's a coach on Dre every single rep, every single play, every single station, making sure he's getting it down, making sure that he understands uh, what's going on. Because uh, early, early on, this kid's going to be able to make an impact. So you got to make sure that he is, uh, you got to make sure from the, the, the physical parts there, you got to make sure from the you know the schematic part, the the X's and O's part, the understanding of the way you want to run the offense part. You got to make sure you can marry that part up because the kid is 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 physically ready uh, right now. I, I was I was kind of shocked. I I don't know if it's the Penn State uniform. I feel like it's just that uniform for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the big white helmet. I don't know what it is, but like I expected this kid to be much smaller. Uh, I mean, you're talking. I'm thinking. When you, when you see film of him, he looks like he may be 180 pounds. Uh, and he comes to Auburn, and I, I guess he could have just been putting in a lot of work in the weight room to, to you know for those type gains and things like that. But he looks like a big physical outside receiver. Uh, and again, it could just be he maybe he was always that way, uh, and it could just be the optical illusion of that, like I said, that Penn State uniform. But he looks like a big physical guy. I, I'm not really expecting 
uh, you know, much of a uh, – I know he has some finesse game to him, but I think this kid could be a, you know, a, one of those Hugh Freeze type uh, wide receivers that's, you know, big physical on the outside. And uh, I can I can be finesse, but I can just go ahead and moss you and beat you one on one if I have to. Uh, you you want to you want to get in a one on one situation to me, and, and I'll embarrass you. Uh, I'm long, I'm physical, I'm fast. Uh, I, that's the way. Uh, that's the way uh, I, I'm viewing this kid based off of uh, one practice. Um, a couple of other things that, that popped out. They're moving him all over the field. Uh, he had a lot of plays where he was lined up in the slot. He had uh, obviously a lot of plays also where he's where he's running on the outside. But to be able the, the flexibility to move him inside, motion him inside, get him on, get him a, a mismatch. He just seems like they're ready to feature him. That it seems like they're ready to feature him, and they're already working on ways to. Uh, manufacture, I guess, getting him the ball because he is going to be a. I think he's going to be a factor. I think he's going to be a factor in the SEC. I'm not. Necess- I'm not really worried anymore about this uh, quote unquote transition from the Big Ten uh, to the SEC. I think this kid's ready. Uh, also, uh, another thing that, that people talked about, which is very exciting, and we're, it's going to kind of shift gears into the next conversation. But there was so many times where people caught him working and helping uh, some of the younger guys like Perry Thompson. So he mentioned that in some of his interviews uh, coming to Auburn. Hey, I want to be a part of something special, but I also want to help mentor the next group of guys. I want to be a leader uh, in a room. And, and early on, it seems like that's he wasn't just he wasn't just giving you, uh, you know, statements like blank statements like they mean something he, he meant it and he seems to be uh doing that right away which is going to be big because because if you can fast track the child that i just mentioned <laughs> if we can help this this child perry thompson get up to speed uh holy cow look out because uh, the pictures coming out, the, the videos coming about. Physically, there we don't have anybody on the roster. We I don't I can't remember a guy a wide receiver that we've had recently that looks and moves like Perry Thompson, and that is also counting uh, Cam Coleman. Uh, every bit of the the six three two twenty stuff that we heard, he's every bit of it. He's every bit of it. He's physically, whatever he's been doing. Uh, he's been getting ready uh, to play and play quickly and play right away. Uh, and that is uh, – that's exciting to see because this kid is going to be NFL size for, you know, three-plus years. Uh, three, Well, maybe not three years. If he's good, he's going to – it's going to just be three years. But he's going to be NFL ready uh, from a body perspective uh, day one. So they're going to do, to do all they can. Uh, to me – I talked about it yesterday. You got the the trifecta of, of Dre, Robert Lewis, and, and Cam Coleman. that are going to be your guys, uh, and they even talked about that yesterday. They got the vast majority of the the, the first team reps. But if you can fast track this kid, if you can fast track Perry Thompson to be a, a weapon as well, man, just 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 think with me for a second. Just think with me for a second. The size that could be on the field. Uh, at the same time, especially – not especially, at receiver or tight end. I mean, you would have – you could have Cam Coleman, 6'3", 195 on the outside. You could have uh, Rivaldo Fairweather, you know, 6'4", 6'5", 240, 250 uh, at tight end. You could have Perry Thompson, 6'3", 222. And then you could have Dre Lambert, uh, who looks to be about, you know, 6'1", 6'2", uh, touching 195, getting close to 200 pounds. I mean, that is some physical freaks uh, at wide receiver. That is some guys that we haven't had uh, in a long time, the guys that can match up with anybody, guys that can abuse defensive backs, can absolutely maul defensive backs, uh, and then guys that can go up, make plays, and then guys that can dust you at the same time. It's not like we just have a bunch of big lumbering dudes out there. Like the, all these guys uh, can move. You saw some of the, you saw some of the um, videos from the summer visits and things like that. Uh, I think Perry Thompson and Cam Coleman had a, uh, I don't know if it was a hundred meter dash or a hundred, uh, not a hundred meter, a hundred yard uh, race, or, or it was some sort of race in the football facility. Uh, and they were neck and neck. And then you've seen 
uh, some some camp footage of Cam Coleman foot racing uh, Ryan Williams, who's one of the fastest players in that class last year, who went to Alabama, uh, and and be neck and neck with him. So like it's not just like you have a bunch of big, tall, big guys that run four sixes and uh, you know they're slow. It's like all these dudes are big, and all these guys can move. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it, it's kind of crazy to think to think of the uh, possibilities you can have with this uh, with this receiving core. Um, and, uh, you know, Hugh's got to be sort of giddy at, at some of the weapons that he can have. So you got your three, you got your three solid guys. Uh, you got Dre sort of taking over as a leader, like he said he would, looking smooth in, in, in looking smooth in all the routes and things like that that he runs. And also he's getting, uh, he's getting that one on one, making sure we got to make sure he's ready to go because this guy is is legit. And then you see him sort of passing that along to a guy like Perry Thompson, some of these other younger guys. Uh, the chemistry there, the the the, uh, the size, the ability, loving what I'm seeing early uh, out of the wide receiver room. Uh, before they practiced, I'm going to shift gears a little bit. Before they practiced, Hugh did a press conference. Uh, I think from like 30, 30 minutes or so right before they went out on the field and got to ask a bunch of questions. A lot of your, you know, your standard stuff, but one, one answer that he talked about that jumped out to me um, and I think sort of speaks, speaks uh, volumes about uh, his mindset for this season, sorry, uh, is uh, I think he was, asked, he was asked a question about, you know, how do you feel about how last year went and, and you know, Basically, it was kind of a question that, that revolved around last season. And he basically just said, look, I'm honestly – I don't like talking about last year. I don't, I don't want to talk about it anymore. We're, we're, we're moving forward. It, it, we, we're, we got this year and we're moving forward. And I, and I know some people, if you don't look – if you just look at that on the surface, you're like, oh, that seems kind of petty or that seems kind of what, whatever. But when you listen to Hugh Freeze talk, Hugh Freeze has been pretty open about everything. He's been pretty candid about pretty much any question he's ever been asked. Sometimes he's been honest uh, to a fault. Uh, but to, be, to, to basically shut down, hey, look, we're moving on. I, I'm pissed off, basically. I, I don't even like to think about what happened last year because we're about to do some things and we're about to move forward now, and, and I don't even want to think about it because some things happened last year that maybe, uh, you know, I feel like I let my let myself down, let everybody down. I, I'm mad about it, and I want to move forward. I I like that. I like that fire. I like that motivation. Uh, the the sense of urgency. I think that's that puts a sense of urgency on this season. Hey, I'm not talking about that. We're we're right now. I I, I we got to get this going right now because, yeah. It wasn't great last year, and, and I know that there's going to have to be a, a big jump this year to be able to, uh, you know, inst continue to instill that confidence that we're moving in the right direction. Uh, I kind of like that answer. I mean, it was a non-answer, but but I kind of liked it. I kind of like that. Uh, I kind of like that it still bothers him. Uh, I, I kind of like that it still rubs him the wrong way because you know what that means. If if you're still thinking about it, you're still trying. You're trying to find ways to make yourself not think about it. And how do you do that? As you you go out and, and you kick some, you know what? This year, you go out and you get your guys ready to light up scoreboards this year, uh, instead of continuing to sort of let that. I mean, I don't want to say continue. It, it clearly it is still festering a little bit. And the only way you can get that get that feeling out is to get this team ready and go out and bust some heads uh, when when toe meets leather here in just a couple of weeks. So um, one of the one of the few times when a non-answer is actually speaks louder than an actual answer. So I, I actually really like that early uh, in the press conference uh, talk with, with with Hugh Freeze before they went to practice. So a lot of talk about practice. You're going to have multiple different I mean, you're going to have multiple breakdowns day after day as uh, fall camp. Uh, continues to progress, but I think early word, the the early storyline is, is the wide receivers. I think it's the most important storyline, honestly, because everything else is, seems sort of, you know, seems sort of in order. Uh, and, and I think the early st storylines has got to be the wide receivers. And, and so far, after practice one, you feel pretty good about the direction. You feel pretty good about the clay that you have, and now you just got to get it molded into the right, uh, get, get it molded and moving in the right direction. So. 
Uh, I want to shift gears really quick. We talked about fall camp. Got to get back on this recruiting train. Uh, it's been a little bit quiet. I, I think some of that's by design. Uh, let that weekend sort of marinate. Let last weekend on into Monday marinate. Let the headlines continue to be Auburn and then uh, let it drag a little bit. And then I think we're going to be jumping right back into the headlines uh, tomorrow. You have Jared Smith. Um, he's a five, he's a five-star defensive end, on, a five-star edge on 247, I think, on the uh, composite. And then the uh, industry average, he's a really high four-star top 100 guy on on three and 247. Uh, announces uh, tomorrow. Uh, on three is doing a big – on three is doing a big uh, commitment day tomorrow, and, and he's going to be a part of it. I think that's really good publicity for Auburn. Uh, and then, obviously, if he picks Auburn, which everything's sort of leaning in that direction, Auburn just continues to continues to build and continues to rise up uh, the recruiting rankings. I put out that I believed uh, – I put out on Twitter that I believed over the next couple of weeks Auburn could have their highest-ranked class ever. Uh, and when I say ever, you got to take that into uh, context of since we've been able to rank classes, since we've been able to have a, a numerical some type of way to, to rank classes. And, and I think there's a really good possibility that uh, with some of the names that have been talked about, you know, you got – you got uh, Tyler Lockhart out there uh, that's got predictions. You got, um, you know, you got Jared Smith. You've, you've been you've been hearing a lot of smoke lately uh, about Deuce Knight. I mean, if you you were to be able to flip Deuce Knight, I mean, you had you had three or four of those type guys, and Auburn's going to have the highest rated class that they've ever had, and it's going to be in August, which is pretty freaking phenomenal. <laughs> and then you're still going to be in the mix for you you know you're still going to be in the mix for the big fi- the big guys like Naeem Offord. Uh, and Andrew Babalola. So tomorrow's going to be a, a fun day. Tomorrow's going to be a big day to maybe kick back, start some some momentum uh, rolling over the next couple of weeks. So, uh, and, and Jared Smith's not such somebody, not somebody just to turn your nose up at, or not somebody just to shake us, you know, whatever. Uh, the dude, the dude can play, and he's got the bones. He's got the he's got the frame to be able to be an elite. SEC uh, defender. He's going to be playing his first full season at Thompson this year. I think he transferred uh, from Spain Park to Thompson maybe somewhere either in the middle or towards the end of the year last year. Uh, And he's going to be primed and ready to go. Uh, And I know he's going to be chomping at the bit to kind of uh, get after it. I mean, it could be your your third Thompson kid uh, of this recruiting class, your fourth Thompson kid in two years. Oh, man, you're (laughs) – that we're, we're in uncharted territory. We're in uncharted uh, territory here where Auburn's been able to kind of – Hugh Freeze has been able to kind of go into historically not Auburn-friendly high schools and, and start to, you know, win them over, start to win them over. And, and this could solidify that pipeline uh, moving forward. You get four guys in three classes. I mean, the, the familiarity then, for, if you have a kid in next year's class – Hey, I got three dudes I played football with that, that I could go that I could go four or four guys I could go I could go hang out with four guys that I can connect with uh, at the next level. It just makes it easier to want to go to Auburn, uh, and you know they're going to be coming back and they're going to be in their all their Auburn gear and stuff like that. So it's just big. It's just big to have uh, to be able to finally get some inroads in some of these big time schools that you've been shut out from uh, for so long. But uh, that's one to watch for. Let's watch for that one. Uh, again, I think Tyler, Lock, Tyler Lockhart could maybe be any day now. So that could be another one that could pop and get Auburn back uh, where they need to be. And I'll break down a little bit more of the specifics of what I mean by the, the, most, the highest rated class uh, that we, we could ever have once we get there. Once we get there, um, <coughs> which I, too, I, I believe we will pretty quickly. Uh, I'll kind of break it down and show you uh, show you what I mean. So, guys, I really appreciate it. Another great week. We got football practice. We got football camp kicking off, uh, and we're getting at it. It's going to be going uh, every single day almost, maybe a few days off, but for the next several weeks. So I really appreciate you listening. 
If you like this uh, video, like it. If you like this channel, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, the underscore Charlie, underscore five, and we're going to get back after it on Monday. And if some news pops over the weekend, we could go live. We do, could do some impromptu stuff, so just pay attention. Keep your head on a swivel. Hit. Make sure you got that alert bell, uh, uh, that alert bell selected so you're aware whenever we do actually uh, pop some un uh, scheduled uh, content. So guys, I really appreciate it. Well, uh, y'all have a great rest of the weekend. Uh, and this is another episode of the top button podcast. Stay bud. Thanks for listening and drive home safely. Yeah.